Hello and welcome to this video on fuzzy joints. This is the part three and in part one and part two we covered single and multiple criteria and on this one we are talking about date ranges so that we can provide dates or a date window and then try to match the data from one table to another. Let's get started. We'll be using these packages. So let's create our first data set. I'm calling it as D1 and I'm using the table package which I called in the libraries to create the data set, a row wise data set. So here we have a data set called D1 which has patient ID and admission date. Now if you notice that admission date is a character, so I'm going to change this admission date into a date format using the as date. So having done that, let's view the data on the screen and see how it looks like. So I'm calling the GT package just to show the data on the screen. Here we have the data which has patient ID and admission dates. So in the second data set, we would have some vitals recorded for the patients using the PAT ID or the patient ID, observation date and their blood pressure readings. So a patient can be in the hospital many, many times. So each time the patient goes in, their blood pressure readings are recorded. And so we are trying to match the patient ID for a particular admission with their current observations. So let's get started with this. I'm going to change the date, the observation date as date. Let's view it. So here we have the patient ID and the, the date of observation and their readings, SPP and DBP reading, the blood pressure readings. Before we do anything complex, let's do a, a normal traditional join using the patient ID and the observation dates. So I'm just going to do using the match command, which is a built-in command in R, the base R. I'm going to create a match, simple match. So merge D1 and D2, the first data set and the second data set. And on the D1, which is called X in this case, patient ID and admission date to be matched. And the Y, which is the second data set, saying PAT ID and the observation date. So if I do this match, so this is an exact match where the patient ID matches the patient ID in the other table and the admission date matches with the observation date. What if the observations were taken a, a bit later, maybe a day after or two days after, or sometimes there is a mistake in the in the recording so that sometimes the people might record the date as um, the date before the admission date. So we can create a window of plus minus two days and then try to do a fuzzy join later on in this um, video. So let's try to create a date window or a date range. In this case, I'm going to use plus minus two days and I'm assuming that the observations of the blood pressure readings might have been done maybe within two days of the admissions of the, of the person. And if there's a mistake in recording that observation date, I'm assuming that the error could be maybe one or two days before the actual, obs actual admission date. So let's create uh, a window saying of low date is observation date minus two days and then high date is observation date plus two days. So if I create that, so let's view this data set now. We have the observation date which was, which was already there and then we have created a low date and high date which is a plus minus two days from the observation date. Using these low dates and high dates or this date window or date range, we are going to create a fuzzy join with our first data set, which is the, uh, the actual admissions data set, which is D1. So let's start doing that. Okay, let's get started. So here we go. This is going to be a fuzzy join and I'm going to use the fuzzy left join. And this is our first data set and this is our second data set. So remember in this case, all the rows from D1 would be available and only the matching component from D2 would be shown because this is the left join. And for the D1, we're going to use the patient ID. And in D2, remember in D2, we call it slightly differently. We called it PAT ID. So patient ID equals PAT ID. And what is going to be a second joining field? We will have to join the admission date equals low date. So in this case, remember we created a low date and a high date. So we're going to use that and do an inexact matching or a fuzzy fuzzy matching in this case. So an admission date equals high date. So don't get confused at this stage. We are not doing an exact match. We are going to do a fuzzy matching. So we will have to create 
something called the, the match function. And remember, what is our first join? The first join is the patient ID equals pat ID. And that should be an exact match. So we'll have to say equals equals. That means patient ID should be an exact match of pat ID. And what about the admission date equals low date? That has to be defined greater than equals. So our admission date is either equal to or higher than the low date, which is a logical way of saying that. And similarly, admission date equals high date. What should be the matching function for that? That is going to be less than or equal to. So admission date should or equal to the high date. So let's complete this and run this join and see the results. So if I complete it and run this, we're going to get a data set called D joined. And if we view that data set, so data set has been joined using the inexact matching of the date range or the low date and high date. So you can see that patient ID 001, the patient got admitted to the hospital twice and their vitals have been properly matched. And in some cases, for example, P005, there was no match because on the on the right hand side, there was no observations recorded for the patient in the table G2. So anti-join is a handy way of finding those records which don't match. So I'm going to use the fuzzy anti-join command, which is just a minor change. So instead of saying the left join, I'm, all I'm saying is fuzzy anti-join. Everything else remains the same. And if I run this now, let me call it slightly differently. I'm just calling it djoin.nt. And if I run it, we are expecting it to find those records which were not matched. So remember in this case, there was only one record which didn't match, which was P005, and that's what it has been shown to us. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you found this information useful and practical. If you haven't watched the first and the second part of this, please do so to get a complete understanding of fuzzy joints in a practical way. Thank you very much.